there is a secret strategy to trading three to four times better than your opponents when you're rallying them even if you have fewer reinforcements so today we're gonna talk about it what's going on guys cheers now this rally report on the screen here was from my most recent kvk you could see this was from about a month ago and we can go ahead and translate here apparently the translation of zeng Yu is item feather not really sure how that works but in this instance we were rallying the enemy controlled pass with a zeng Yu nevsky and you could see that the rally side had two 233,000 deads, 229,000 severely wounded, 2.7 million slightly wounded, and 2.6 million remaining. The enemy side was defending with a really powerful Zenobia Flavius and yet still had 841,000 deaths, 776,000 severely wounded, with 8 million slightly wounded and none remaining. And you might be saying, okay, that's only one rally report, right? Maybe this was a player who forgot to put equipment on their on their garrison or maybe we had maxed kvk tech and they didn't except here's another report that was just like it on the same day with a different player same combination similar result here's another report from the same day different player different commanders similar result and they even tried yadvigo yss with a different player the next day with the same result and just to be clear these were very strong players in a very strong alliance and no matter what garrison they were using we were still able to crack it with insane trades really consistently and to make this even crazier if you do the math here you'll see that we had about 5.8 million troops involved in our rally versus 9.6 million troops for the defenders so how were we able to get such an insane trade with even fewer troops consistently against different whales with different combinations in the garrison would you believe me if i told you the secret was cleopatra of all the commanders it's cleopatra okay well she's only part of the secret and let me explain this strategy is already being used by many top tier alliances in rise of kingdoms and we're talking about imperium kingdoms we're talking about kingdoms that are in osiris league this is a strategy used by the upper echelon of the game and so it's not necessarily a secret to them but it's definitely confusing using to me as to why many kingdoms aren't using this strategy because it's definitely involving a lot of commanders that whales probably already have expertise so today we're going to talk about that strategy but I just have to say me revealing this strategy opens up the possibility that it's used against our kingdom in some future kvk so if you appreciate my honesty and the willingness to share this with the public I would really appreciate dropping a thumbs up on the video consider subscribing while you're down there it helps out the channel a ton it helps beat that YouTube algorithm which lately has just been nasty it's been rude boys okay let's talk about Cleopatra and how we're going to abuse some game mechanics to get some extremely favorable trades so the first thing we have to understand is how you can actually buff your own army in the open field and when we talk about open field this applies to open field fighting but it also applies to a rally because a rally is in the open field in rise of kingdoms it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out okay so let's say my Guan Yu CPO right here is the rally that I would like to buff and here we have my Constantine and conveniently behind my Constantine is a Joan of Arc now both Constantine and Joan of Arc have really powerful buffs that you can apply to not only their own army but to nearby allies if we take a look at the active skill here on Constantine it reduces the damage taken by this army and nearby allies by 10 percent for five seconds that's a really powerful buff that you can apply to your army and everybody knows that Joan of Arc has a really powerful active skill as well where she gives you a 30 percent buff depending on troop type and 50 rage per second for four seconds these are both very long buffs that you can apply to your allies and they're also very important so in the case of this report we were using cavalry so this would be applying a 30 percent increase in cavalry defense and 50 rage per second for four seconds on top of the constantine buff so now you might be saying okay omniarch uh, applying a buff to your to your army is not a, it's not a hidden secret okay using a constantine Joan it's not really a, it's not really a secret and of course that's not the secret the secret involves this specific combination of commanders all applying buffs at the exact same time and an understanding of how you can guarantee that these buffs are applying to the rally now what do I mean by that you see one thing that is not explained in the text of any buff in rise of kingdoms is how many allies can you buff with an active skill so in the case of Joan of Arc it just says troops led by this commander 
and nearby allied troops so this means we don't know we don't know how many allied troops you can actually buff are you buffing everybody near that Joan of Arc the answer is no the answer is you can buff up to five armies with Joan of Arc's active skill and this applies to all buffs but if you have a massive murder ball in the open field how can you guarantee that this buff is going to be applied to the rally well the answer in the case of Zenobia and in the case of Constantine and in the case of Joan of Arc and everybody else who applies buffs is that the game will actually prioritize your armies over everybody else that's eligible nearby so for example if my Constantine Joan of Arc applies their buffs to nearby allies it's guaranteed going to apply to my own army right the actual army that gets the buff but also my three armies here would take priority over any other alliance member coalition member or anybody else who is nearby so the secret is that these armies need to be owned and operated by the player who's also rallying the pass or the objective so in the case of all of the rallies we've discussed in this video the player sus h who's in my alliance who's actually an insanely powerful player by the way had these three armies nearby the rally the entire time we were rallying constantly applying the six different buffs from these commanders to the single rally that's right the Zhang Yunevsky was getting six different buffs from these commanders and this is not an equal playing field because you can't do this to a garrison these buffs will only apply to allies in the open field so the enemy can't even replicate this strategy on their end to combat the fact that you suddenly have an insane amount of buffs going on at the same time so let's talk about which of these buffs are being stacked on top of Zhang Yu and then I'm going to talk about how you can apply these buffs without your armies dying because that might be the first concern that you're thinking about right like okay it's great if you can apply these buffs to your army but look at how few troops are here and look at how weak these armies actually are surely anybody in the open field who sees a Constantine Joan would just swarm it down or surely any enemy in the open field who sees a Zenobia Cleopatra would just swarm it down right uh, that would be the most obvious flaw in this strategy is that these armies are easily killed and they're highly targeted because of how effective this strategy actually is so we're going to talk about later how you can guarantee that you can apply these buffs safely so let's take a look at Zenobia first okay her active skill says that she heals the nearby allied troop with the lowest percentage of units remaining with a healing factor of 300 could be this commander and then heals their own troops with an 1100 healing factor and any army that gains this heal from this active skill gets 50 percent increased health and 30 percent increased damage for two seconds we already discussed that part so how do we know that the nearby allied troop with the lowest percentage of units remaining is going to be the rally well my understanding of how this works is that the leader of the rally after a few seconds or a few minutes is not going to have that many troops left in that rally right they're only going to have a few thousand troops left in the rally if it's been going on for a while but there's still going to be three million troops in that specific rally at any given time assuming that it's actually full and even if that's not how it works let's say that it's still pulling from the army size rather than the rally size so let's just say for example the rally lead puts 300,000 troops into the rally at the beginning well if he goes down to let's say 30,000 troops uh, after a minute or two of, of the rally which is completely possible and often happens very quickly well then they only have like 10 percent of troops left anyway so in either way no matter how this actually functions there's pretty much never going to be a time where these other two armies are going to drop below like 15 or 10 percent of units remaining anyway which means the rally is pretty much always going to be the one with the fewest troops remaining next let's take a look at Cleopatra who also gives a 400 healing factor to this commander's troops and up to five allied troops within a circular area of effect and troops who receive healing gain 15 percent increased defense for two seconds so here we can see yet another healing factor on top of that rally it's relatively small just like Zenobia but you're gaining a really nice 15% defense bonus. Next, we could look at Trajan, who, when he's expertise, his active skill says troops led by this commander and nearby allied troops gain 30% increased skill damage for three seconds and 50 rage per second. So that's 150 rage to the Zhang Yunevsky, which already has one of the lowest rage cycles and lowest rage requirements in the entire game. 
and 30 percent increased skill damage on top of those two commanders is absolutely ridiculous but it doesn't end there because mulan is going to be behind that trajan who is increasing the attack defense and health of the rally by 20 percent and 30 percent increased march speed which doesn't actually matter finally we have the constantine buff which we've already talked about reduces the damage the rally takes by 10 percent for five seconds which is huge and we have the buff we talked about with Joan of Arc, which in this case would be a 30% increased defense and another 50 rage per second for four seconds. That's 200 rage. Now you might be thinking, okay, Omniarch, a lot of these buffs are kind of, you know, they're, they're going to overlap one another, right? Here we're talking about 30% increased defense. We're talking about Mulan, who gives you 20% increased defense. We're talking about Cleopatra, who gives you 15% increased defense. And realistically, you know, th these skills, whichever one is the, the highest defense buff, is going to be the one that takes place. But what you're doing here really is you're just maximizing the uptime of all of these different skills so if they're popping at different times then perhaps Cleopatra's buff might be active when no other defense buffs actually are which of course is not that likely because you know Joan of Arc is four seconds long Mulan is uh three seconds long when she's expertise but again she has a healing factor Cleopatra so there's just a lot of different ways where this specific combination of armies is really good at applying a plethora of different buffs to a specific rally that is extremely powerful and there's so many ways that you're gaining rage here from Trajan from Joan of Arc that you're just you're stacking tons of active skills on top of a 30 percent increase in skill damage and the outcome is absolutely devastating even if you have fewer units reinforcing that rally and the secret to having these buffs apply to the rally for such a long time and guarantee that those buffing armies stay alive is the Constantine Richard strategy so I'm going to paint a picture as to how this actually would function using a pass here in home kingdom so let's say that this pass is owned by the enemy and we have a rally coming in hitting this pass off to the side we have the enemy huddled up behind the pass because they're just constantly reinforcing and we have open field presence over here for the for the, the rallying side for our side all right I brought some armies over here so I can illustrate better okay let's pretend that the Nevsky is the rally hitting this pass and here we have our Zenobia Cleopatra representing the buffing armies okay let's just pretend this is all three buffing armies right here what you would do is have a single allied player perhaps a farm account or something like that they would drop out of your alliance and they would send out the Constantine with the Richard and what they would do is you would start fighting one another so the one player who left the the, the Alliance starts fighting the three different buffing armies that I showed here on the screen before and you could see that there are different troop numbers here these are tier four units my understanding is that they are all infantry because that's the most tanky troop type and this specific combination meaning 75k 90k and 110k seems to last a really long time in a three versus one scenario when they're fighting 210k of tier four infantry behind the Constantine Richard now the reason for this is that Constantine Richard doesn't really deal that much damage I mean both Constantine and Richard are kind of hitting like a wet noodle okay they don't deal much damage they're very very tanky they both have a way a way to heal themselves of course Richard has his healing but we also have the healing factor on Constantine which only triggers one time but it's a massive healing factor which will completely replenish their army in the open field when fighting the three buffing targets so the way that this is actually working is that you're fighting in a controlled environment behind the pass and all the enemies are over here now of course if the enemies start to see you trying to do this strategy they may try to push through the pass and and actually stop it but if they do that then there's two advantages that you have one those armies that are pushing through to stop the buffing marches are not armies that are reinforcing the pass which is real that's that's good right the second thing is that ideally you'll have a bunch of players in this area who are just going to swarm down that specific target that's trying to take out the buffing marches right and even if they do land a couple of hits on the buffing marches uh it's only tier four it's not a big deal they just run back to the city and then you reset and send out those buffing armies once again or you could even cancel the rally and do the whole strategy over again but if there's a lot of players in this area and everybody is sort of stacked up against one another inside the trees off to the side or something like that it's going to be really difficult for the enemy 
enemy to actually push through the pass and defeat those buffing armies now it is important that the buffing armies have to be sort of close to the rally okay because they have to be close enough for the buffs to actually reach the rally and actually buff that specific unit but again if you're hitting from the side right you could have your your rally over here you could have the buffing armies like down here for example and they would still be close enough to be actually applying the buffs to the to the rally uh, and the other thing you have to keep in mind is that when you're using a zhang yu i don't have zhang yu high enough to make him primary here but if you're using a zhang yu primary nevsky secondary well zhang yu is going to be popping off a ton of his aoe active skill thanks to his own rage engine but on top of that we have the buffing armies over here as well and so what's going to be happening is that this rally is going to be firing off a ton of aoe in the direction of the enemy and so if they try to push through the pass to come and defeat your buffing armies there's a really good chance that that aoe is going to clip a bunch of them and take a bunch of deads with them and so ultimately at the end of the day this is sort of like a win-win strategy right uh if they don't do anything about the buffing marches then great news you're gonna get insane trades just like this assuming that you also have like max tech versus max tech and all other things pretty much equal but if they do try to do something about the buffing armies then they're going to take a bunch of deads from the aoe and you're going to be able to swarm those armies down coming through the pass and those armies aren't going to be reinforcing the pass which could lead to a, a staggered or an offset a rally to pass troop ratio which gives you just a better trade in general and it even got to a point with these three different rallies and we it happened more than this but these were just the best reports um it got to a point where we were just letting the enemy take the pass because we knew that we could get insane trades like this every single time and we could just take the pass right back of course this strategy does take a little bit of coordination and one thing that you have to keep in mind is that it's very important to drop a marker on this the single army that is from the player who left the alliance right so one player is going to leave the alliance when they're fighting the buffing armies they're going to appear as an enemy on the map they're going to appear red on the map and so if there are players in your alliance or coalition who don't actually know what's happening they're going to see that red marker and it's going to be a constantine and they're just going to swarm it down right so you have to place a marker uh saying very clearly this is friendly right you have to make it very clear that what's happening here is intentional that way people don't misunderstand and think that an enemy Constantine got behind uh you know got through the pass and and like they swarm it down so that kind of is important that you're very transparent with your alliance and making sure people don't hit that buffing army the only thing that you want to be hitting that Constantine Richard is the three buffing armies that aren't even full that are only using tier four and that's how you're going to get the, these buffs to pop off for like 10 to 15 minutes straight these three armies hitting the Constantine Richard can last like 10 to 15 minutes of constantly buffing that rally which leads to insane results as we've already seen in the video and that's pretty much it that's another really good use for your Zenobia that's another really novel use of your Cleopatra so if you haven't been using Cleo lately in the in the battlefield you can dust her off and there's another way that you can actually get some use out of her and Constantine and Trajan and the others that we mentioned guys with that being said if you enjoyed the video if you found it informative or useful go ahead and drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel while you're down there and consider clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of Kings video comment down below your thoughts on this strategy have you seen it used before have you used it before do you think that this is even fair because the enemy pass can't replicate this in their own way so there's definitely a discussion to be had there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace